Why is my mom's meatloaf the best meatloaf I've ever had? For one, she uses two ingredients that I find unique in a meatloaf. The first is red bell pepper and the second is V8 juice. And that gives the meatloaf a great flavor. The next thing is that it was hand molded into the shape of the loaf so that it is not too thick. That results in a perfect proportion of meatloaf to glaze. It's a simple, not overthought meatloaf recipe that has a distinct flavor to it. And today we're using the perfect meat thanks to our sponsor today, Porter Road, but more on them later. For now, let's just jump right into it. So I need about a half cup of red bell pepper and a half cup of onion finely chopped. We want it nice and thin. Just gonna remove this rib. And even just tasting, the bell pepper, you start to imagine how this is gonna add so much flavor to the meatloaf. Now for the onion and the peppers, we wanna go roughly the same size, which is a very fine dice. We want texture, but if you got too big of a piece in there, it's not gonna really cook during the baking. And if it's too thin, you're not gonna get the texture. If you're gonna cut them any bigger, you're gonna need to saute them before mixing into the meatloaf. So just go really fine dice on the peppers, get that into a bowl, and then some thin horizontal cuts on the onion, followed by some thin vertical cuts on the onion, and then as thin of a dice as you can get. And you can always run your knife through it and get the dice as fine as you want it afterwards. We're gonna measure out a half cup of those onions and then get those into the bowl as well. Just gonna hit that with a little salt, set that off to the side. Then we're going with about half a cup of V8 juice, which is where I got the idea to add tomato sauce to my meatball recipe. A few tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, then get that into a bowl to mix in the breadcrumbs. If it smells like it needs a little Worcestershire sauce, throw a little bit in, it's all flavor. And then about a cup and a half of breadcrumbs. Now I will note, I used a coarser breadcrumbs when I tested this recipe, and I'm using a finer breadcrumb today, and that makes a difference. Looks a little dry, so I'm just gonna adjust with a little bit of the V8 juice. See, the funny thing is, last time I made this, I used thicker breadcrumbs. These were more fine breadcrumbs. So I needed a cup and a half last time. I probably only needed a cup of fine breadcrumbs this time. So I'm probably going to like hold off a little section of it and then just add it if I need it. But just realize like that's a variable. The size of the breadcrumb, the coarseness is gonna affect how much you're gonna use. The finer you use, the less you have to. The thicker you use, the more you're gonna wanna use. I'm gonna add this and then use my judgment to decide if I need to add any more. That's cooking. Even though I'm giving you this recipe, you're gonna have to make adjustments like this with any recipe that I give you. The only ingredient left for us is our ground beef, and that comes courtesy of our sponsor today, Porter Road. Porter Road is an online butcher shop that delivers high quality meat directly to your door with a mission to fix a broken food system. Started as a local butcher shop in Nashville 10 years ago, run by two chefs. This online butcher shop was my favorite out of the bunch long before they became a sponsor of this show. They offer a wide variety of dry aged beef, pork, chicken, and lamb, including rare butcher cuts like these beautiful beef marrow bones, beef cheeks, Sierra Steaks, and my favorite, the Terrace Major. They work with trusted local farmers who raise animals the right way, humanely, on pastures. No added hormones or antibiotics. All their beef is dry aged for 14 days, and they hand cut each steak and chop to produce cuts that you will not find at your grocery store. You can shop a la carte like you would at your local butcher shop, or you can go with a subscription model so that you could have your meat arrive at your door without ever leaving your home. The steaks and chops arrive fresh, never frozen, and orders $100 or more will ship for free. I even got them to give my viewers 15% off their first order. Click the link down in the description. The promo will be applied automatically. Now go down and get yourself some Porter Road today. Here I've got about two pounds of ground beef. I need a pound and a half, so I'm gonna use one and a half of these. So I'm just gonna get that one and a half pounds in the bowl and save that other half pound. And then I'm just gonna go through and kind of break up the meat, loosen it up a little bit so we can allow everything to kind of get evenly distributed. And then I'm gonna crack one whole egg into the mixture and just with my fingertips, gently work that into the meat so that we can get every piece of the ground beef coated in the egg. Then we're gonna toss in our onion and our bell pepper. Mix that in really well. 
and then we're adding in that slurry mixture of V8 and breadcrumbs. With the meatloaf, we really wanna make sure there's no air pockets inside. So we kinda of wanna incorporate it and try and beat the air out of the meatloaf. I can see I need more of that breadcrumbs, so I'm just gonna add the rest and work that in until it's a nice homogenous mixture. A little bit of salt, and I'm feeling like I need a little bit more breadcrumbs. So I'm just gonna feel it out until the meatloaf feels the right density. You want it moist, but you don't want it too loose or else it won't hold its shape as a loaf. So there's a little bit of feel that's involved, but once you do it one or two times, you're gonna understand what I'm talking about. How this looks, how it can kind of hold the shape in this bowl, kind of gives me an indication that we're in the good place. So now we're gonna mold the loaf onto the pan. Now say you use one of these things, it's too thick of a loaf in my opinion. You get too much loaf and not enough glaze. We don't want anything thicker than the face of a fork so that when we serve a slice, you can just kind of pick a nice bite up with a fork. You'll see what I mean. Now you wanna start to use your hands. You wanna drop that loaf into the pan, try and get that air worked out of it and start to slap it into a shape. Sort of like if you've ever seen fresh butter being made and they use like paddles to help get a square brick of butter. We're kind of doing the same thing with the meatloaf. This is the only acceptable time to slap your meat and we're trying to work it into a relatively thin, even rectangular shape. We want a flat top and we want flat sides so that every slice you cut from it will be evenly cooked. And we're just working it with our hands into a nice, long, rectangular loaf. Then you wanna take a little bit of oil into your hand and then just gently pat that along the surface of the meat that's gonna help that exterior brown. Making it on a sheet tray like this also helps the browning process all across the surface of the meat, which would be harder to get if you bake this in a loaf pan. And then into a 425 degree oven for 30 minutes. In the meantime, we can prepare our glaze. One cup of ketchup, then about three tablespoons of a spicy brown mustard, although any mustard will work. Two tablespoons of dried oregano, and then a half a cup of a lightly packed brown sugar. Usually we pack in brown sugar, but for this, it's uh, that's a little bit too sweet, so I do a lightly packed half cup. Mix it really well, and I like to just pop it in the microwave for 15, 30 seconds just to dissolve the sugar. We can set that aside till we're ready to glaze. About 15 minutes into the cooking process, you want to rotate the meatloaf a little bit to get even browning. And then after 30 minutes, pull out the meatloaf and then begin applying the glaze. But first there might be this accumulation of fat that builds up in the pan. So I just take a little paper towel and just blot that up a little bit, just so we don't have an excess amount of fat in the pan. We wanna make sure the glaze is fully coating any area of the meatloaf that is exposed. So you wanna make sure you got a healthy amount of glaze on the top and the sides of the meatloaf. And then get that back into the oven for 10 more minutes. At this point, we kinda wanna to start to pay attention to the internal temperature. And we're looking for a 155 to 165 range. Right now, after temping it, been cooking for about 35 to 40 minutes and it's at 166. So right now, I'm not worried about time. I'm just wanna get this out, apply that last layer of glaze, get it back in the oven to set and then get it out as fast as possible. Back in the oven for maybe five more minutes. Just a really quick blast and then back out. Get that off of the pan and allow the meatloaf to cool for a few minutes before slicing into it. And it's very much sort of eats like a brisket. Each slice is gonna be this perfect strip of perfectly cooked meat and a beautiful glaze over every little bite. And you should get that perfect ratio of meat to glaze in every bite that you eat from a fork. This meatloaf cooked for about 45 minutes and inside was moist and perfectly cooked. A few air pockets left, but didn't appear to be a problem. Now, do you see what I mean about the size that I can take my fork and be able to get a nice proportion of the glaze to the meat? Perfection. Unbelievable flavor. It's about a handful of things my mom really nailed, and this was the top of her list. She'd serve it with roasted crispy paprika potatoes and some roasted broccoli. Simple weeknight meal, easy to do, and can feed a family. And to be honest, the best piece is that end. So you got all the crispy edges. Mmm, 
So, so good. This recipe is going to be linked down in the description along with all other relevant links. That's all that I have today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself. If you're feeling those fall vibes like I am, I got a few more recipes on the screen you might want to make this time of year. Like this creamy, delicious braised short rib beef stroganoff, you have to give this one a shot. I mean, come on.